we can do a proper educated uh, vote on this instead of trying to fiddle through PDFs and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> so one, one question I had was more architectural, I guess. And just wondering, I, I don't see it in the drawings um, and it probably means that it's not required. But it seems like there's no grade access from the decks. Is, is that correct? The rear yeah, decks. That that's correct. Yep. So there's a little, there's some sort of a little uh, screening wall between each unit's uh, deck. Yes. Okay. And and that suffices for for fire egress. If you have two means of egress out through the bottom. Um, you have one through the um, the uh, entryway, and then you can go back through the garage and out the back. Understood. Thank you. Um, I personally don't agree that we can, as a board, look at a set of drawings and 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 think that the applicant is trying to deceive anybody. What's on the drawings is what's on the drawings, and and we can't go into people's heads and see, oh, well, boy, geez, you know, you could you could slip a closet right there. And the boy, look at that, just so happens to be a smoke detector. And boy, it's got a door. I mean, what's on the drawings is on the drawings. And we, we can't presuppose anything as far as I'm concerned. Um, two more things. Uh, I assume that all the electric as as it pertains to utility electric is 100% underground. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Very good. And just one more comment, I guess, <clears throat> is uh, I saw something from DPS to encourage you to go make friends with your neighbors and try to get probably a cross property easement to uh that's explain yeah i i what i believe that that will do is make a nice easy access for people to cut through your property to get to essex lane and and i don't think it's prudent so again that's that's me one board member making that comment so uh thank you for the opportunity Thank you, Roy. And if, if I may, uh, I, I'm more than happy to provide full 24 by 36 plan sets, uh, as many sets as the board would like to see. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we are preparing a Rev 1 set. We're hoping to have a comprehensive look at all the comments from everybody, all the peer reviewers, and integrate them into one set. Um, but I'm, I'm more than happy to get you a 24 by 36 set of what we have now here today, as well as, the, you know, of course, Rev 1 as one that's prepared, we can get that over. I, I don't need a set now. I, I I would like to see the set that includes everything that you intend on building. And I suspect Mr. Ford would agree with me. I like real plans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we do have a full yeah. plan set now. Um, it's just, you know, it's a 20 sheet set. It's just not uh, up to date with the latest peer review comments that we just received a few days ago. So we're sure. going to go through and revise those to keep everybody happy and then submit a rev one. Craig, we can chat and I can uh, I can tell you in between you and, and Jack how many plans we can have and uh, I can send them out to the board. Um, Mr. Chair, you mind if I make some comments? Please. Uh, just quick, excuse me, Drew, just one quick thing. Um, just to clarify, I don't think anybody on this board wants a set of stuff that hasn't got the edits done. So we, we don't want an early set. We want We want a set right. that shows everything. Just so we don't duplicate stuff and, you know, kill more trees. Understood. Um, begin. Um, first comment is, um, I, I mean, I think we, we community development department made this point, I think, at the first uh, construction review meeting that we had. Um, I, the, you know, the community development, development department feels that we're, we're kind of putting a lot into this, into this parcel. Um, these are some really large buildings. Um, I guess the first point we'd like to make is that I want the planning board to be in, you know, the, the renderings kind of shows, but these are, these are large. 
They're going to be very tall, but also in volume as well. Uh, is there a reason? I know you mentioned that the mechanicals are going in the attic, um, but is there a reason that you're, you know, besides the, the architectural, that they are going to have so much volume um, and not really usable space up at the top of the beach building? Uh, we can we can uh, talk about bringing the uh, the volume down a little bit. Um, the the it was mostly to keep that New England you know um, Cape look. So the traditional steeper pitches, um, that's, that's kind of a byproduct of it. Yeah, I, the, I I look at it from like a whole thing of the site plan and that, you know, this is going to be sitting at, I think I'm the, what I'm looking at the back porch is that um, you're going to be higher than your neighbors. So you're going to be, you know, the people behind you, these are going to be really large. Um, I mean, I get it, it's residential. Um, I do understand that. Um, and they do, they do meet the height uh, regulations. No, and I know they do, but this kind of goes back to another comment that we made at uh, construction review, but uh, the more buffering with landscaping, I think the better, as you mentioned, this is a residential property. You sure. mentioned people want to have some sort of privacy. And I think the more landscaping and greenery that you can add in, the better. I think I mentioned it and I, I forget the answer why, and, and you know, Dr. Otto mentioned as well, but that, kind of section in the back where there just seems to stop um, vegetation. I'd like to see the vegetation continue all along the back. Um, I think that, that will just one help with the height between the two properties. Um, but again, I think to your point about the privacy. Um, so second to that, um, is there any thought in the potential of a, a pathway from the rear property line in front of building the the 16 unit building in the the front building that would maybe go between the existing building and then the two others i, I don't want to see residents walking i mean you have to i would look at if you're renting a place here you're going to be walking to the mall you're going to be walking to the grocery store across the street you're going to be moving around you know dr Otto mentioned the sidewalks um I know that you have the sidewalk near where the, the mail area is, but you're still walking through the street to get there. So I think some sort of off-road pathway that connects you to the front of the building, uh, the better. All I can see is people walking through the street um, in the parking lot here when you could be walking somewhere off-road. I, mean, I don't know if that could be worked into your revision um, at all. Um, Second to that, I, I know that the rendering shows, but I wanna make sure that the sidewalks do connect into the property um, and that I think the DPS memo mentions it, but they all need to be ADA um, accessible. Um, the landscape plan, I'd also like to see, um, speaking more onto the landscape plan, the buffering around the dumpsters. Um, I think that, I know you have a fence there, but I think there should be, I think you should add in greenery around that area as well. Um, and then to finalize, uh, the Community Development Department also stands with uh, Department of Public Service on the recommendation uh, that you work with the neighbor. And I don't know if you have reached out to them or not on Essex Lane, uh, but to have that be the point of access. I, um, I think it's safer for people entering and exiting the property if you do it through that light there. That's a pretty busy intersection. There's a lot of cars moving around there. Um, so I think light control would be the best. Sorry, do I don't really understand that point. Could you point it out on a just the general site plan and what you're try, trying to achieve there? Yeah, let me share my screen really quickly. It's to utilize the light. Uh, it would, can, you see, can everyone see my screen? Yes. 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 It would be to, uh, and it'd have to be shown on a map, maybe better, but one of the ideas was that you would exit through this area and then you would come out Essex Lane here to the stop. Because as of right now, and please correct me if I'm wrong, this is um, left turn only. Or no, right turn only, sorry. Correct, right? It's only turn in and yes. then right yes. turn Right in, right out only. Yeah. And that's because the intersection is very close and that you don't want cars trying to cut across multiple lanes of traffic to take that left there. Um, but instead of having because the first entrance, you can take a left out of there. Sorry, right out of there. No, you. sorry, it's a left. I'm trying to get myself situated here. Mm -hmm. 
I can, at the appropriate time, I can speak to our conversations with our neighbors. Yeah, please. Now? Yeah, that'd be great. Ahead, it turns out that uh, that property is owned uh, by a gentleman uh, uh, named Bernie Ruskin. Uh, Mr. Ruskin uh, had passed away several years ago. His son, Thomas Ruskin, who is a resident of uh, Swampscott, is the uh, owner operator of those properties currently. Um, Mr. Ruskin and I, Tom, spoke, uh, and we, uh, Mr. Ruskin turned my questions over to uh, his attorney, Bob Moriarty, and I had occasion to look at uh, the um, documents that were of record. Uh, they are registered land. Uh, the Ruskins own the front section that we would want to uh, uh, connect to, uh, and um, they have an easement uh, over their property, uh, which serves the Avalon uh, property to the rear. Uh, and there is a real question of, uh, given the fact that it's uh, uh, registered land and there's a certificate of uh, title, uh, that references the easement, um, there's a glaring question of whether or not um, adding our property to that roadway would be overburdening the easement, uh, which in my personal opinion uh, and the opinion of Bob Moriarty, it uh, more than likely uh, is an overburdening of the easement. Um, the other half of the question is, uh, whether we would even go so far at, or whether the Ruskins would go so far as uh, to um, approach Avalon um, to see whether they would amend uh, the easement as well uh, so as to uh, be able to provide uh, for our uh, new traffic. Uh, we are continuing to pursue that. The Ruskins uh, have been longtime owners of uh, that property to our left, <clears throat> to our south, and we would, uh, we're would we happy to work with them and they with us, and we'll try to uh, have those questions answered the next time we appear before you. Mr. Sure. Chair. Go ahead, Matt. Um, mm -hmm. Jack, I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit to the timeline for uh, for you coming back and, and reworking those lots from from five parcels down to two. Um, just kind of wondering what the what the logistics and the process is for that. I think that if uh, if this plan, you know, if it, um, we would probably need. Uh, we could be at the next meeting actually, or two meetings hence, uh, with the A and R, um, and. Um, as to being back here with the with our revisions and with uh, the um, as uh, Craig refers to it the Rev One plan, um, I think that we're going to work out as much as we can uh, with our peer reviewers and um, then submit. So, would it be fair to the team? Do you think that's two meetings, one month? I don't see any issue meeting that timeline. From, from my end, the biggest uh, peer review typically is stormwater. And we have a couple little uh, loose ends to tie up, but nothing substantial. Uh, we've had one back and forth to date. So I don't see any issue getting it accomplished by then. And with respect to the A&R, we actually have a plan of land already created. It's, it's, it's sheet three in this plan set we have here. And we've made no changes to the proposed lot line since we established that plan. So in terms of being prepared to do that, we, we can do that anytime. And we're happy to share that, that plan if it helps anybody better understand um, the lot layout now versus proposed. Attorney Kelty. Yes. Is there a, an affordability component in this? Yes. Uh... Yes, we'll... Uh comply with the inclusionary zoning uh, requirements. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there's two members in the uh, audience that wish to speak, uh, Ward 4 Councilor uh, Charest, as well as uh, Councilor at Large Manning Martin. Uh, I'm gonna unmute um, Councilor 
Manny Manning Martin first. She's had her hand up. Um, you know. Greetings, Ann. Hi, can you hear me? We hear you fine. That's excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I actually just jumped in early so that I could make sure that I didn't have technical difficulties because I'm really interested in the next um, item on your agenda. So I did sit through this um, hour and a half uh, waiting for my hand where I raised my hand to just be acknowledged. Um, but I am uh, concerned about that because had members of the public raise their hands looking to be acknowledged to speak on this, uh, I feel that they would not have been recognized because that, that, I, I that, was not. And that's, so that's not so we would uh, we would offer the courtesy just as we're offering it to you. Well, I, I, I well, I'd like to finish speaking. Go ahead. You gave me the floor after an hour and a half. So I'd like to just continue to speak. I, I'm, I'm just uh, surprised that you wouldn't open the floor. I know that your clerk or someone was wise and courteous enough to extend the courtesy to those that had their hand up, which I was one of them. And instead it, it wasn't recognized. And this is a public board, it's a public meeting. And we've been an hour and a half into this process. And now you're, you're allowing the public to speak. So I would, I, I would suggest in the future that it, it is a public board, a public meeting that you would get, allow people that struggle through this whole process to get online and follow that have an interest in what you're speaking of, because you guys do very important work. That's why we're all tuning in. Uh, you allow them to speak first, not after you've done all this. I mean, you've all gone through lots of, of great questions. I, I respect all that you do. I respect your work and your volunteerism, uh, but you, I, I just am shocked that you didn't recognize people that want to speak prior to you taking all the information in. Uh, so thank you for allowing me to speak, but I really just tuned in early so that I would not be shut out of the next portion, which is of which I have interest in. Um, I didn't want to run into technical difficulties. So I, I'm just surprised by that. And I, I would hope that in the future, maybe you open things up to the public first. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Charest is up out there too, Drew? Yeah. Can you unmute him, please? Yeah, it should be on now. Yep, can you hear me? I hear yeah. you, Ed. Thank you, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak and I do appreciate all the hard work you do and, and I am patient enough to, uh, to wait my turn to speak and allow me to speak. Um, it's great to hear the information that you withdraw from the, uh, uh, the, the participants here. So I, I, I take a lot of knowledge from um, hearing everything that's being said. Um, I, I do have a, a couple of concerns and as uh, Dr. Otto has mentioned too, and um, also Mr. Gagan with the, the office space being utilized as a, uh, a second bedroom. Um, I do um, uh, understand that a, an office space can be turned into a second bedroom quite easily. And I'm not sure if a open space on the top floor with the bedroom would be more wise than a, uh, an open space with an office being included into the top bedroom would be a, a uh, an easy solution. So a, um, a second bedroom isn't made uh, easily. So, but I, again, I appreciate all the wisdom this board brings and the, and do respect your decisions, but that is a concern of mine also. Uh, the other one is that on the plans. And again, I know you're looking for a second plan um, and not to question any of the, the work here is that I don't see any snow storage uh, on the plan for the parking lot. That is, you know, again, a quite a bit of um, parking lot and garages and things of that nature. And I did live in a townhouse uh, similar to the design here uh, on Lowell Street. And as a board of trustee, one of my biggest issues I had was snow storage uh, when you had, you know, quite a bit of snow uh, build up over time where they piled it and they end up taking visitor spots. Uh, and then also the drainage of that snow to be um, uh, dumped into the catch basins and is it adequate to in in include that. So if, if um, I can uh, be uh, educated on that as well, 
of what it, the snow storage is, would um, would be with um, the, uh, the runoff also. The other thing was the uh, when you talked about the uh, to come out on Prospect Street using the easement, you know, there is cars coming in out and I can see, you know, you're coming out of Shaw's parking lot, taking that quick right and then a quick left into it, the snaking in. And, and uh, I, I, I am concerned with that area too, uh, that all of you have uh, pointed out so wisely. So I do appreciate that. Uh, the other issue I do have when you talked about um, the fire apparatus being able to get to the back of the building, the property, and not able to make it to it, if I'm understanding correctly, making it to it on, on the property itself, but utilizing the adjacent property, um, what kind of liability that would bring that you, know, you are expecting, uh, or of the fire department, again, on their wisdom, uh, utilizing a neighbor's property to get to property uh, in the back. Again, maybe I misunderstood that, and I, I certainly uh, welcome to uh, being explained to that, but uh, allowing the uh, apparatus not to have to utilize its own property to the back. I'm very happy to hear that this is a, uh, a one-bedroom property. I understand it is by right, uh, but then again, we're, we're all in this concern uh, with the, uh, the, the style of building and, and what it's going to be used for, especially the one bedroom when it's being proposed as a one bedroom and the developer has full intent to utilizing it as one bedroom. But once a person gets in there and what they utilize that property for is concerning. Uh, so I do thank you. I highly respect all of you in making the decisions as a planning committee. And I, again, it, it, it rests upon you, but thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Ed. Drew was- hey, Thank you. Anyone else? I, uh, uh, Mr. Ford, if, if I may, is there somebody else that wants to speak from the audience? Yes. Um, it looks like Craig is raising his hand to speak, but from um, what I can see in the audience of people's names, no one else is raising their hand. Uh, All right, so, so, so if I may, Mr. Ford, and it's, you know, um, I don't believe we had a um, public hearing this evening. I think it might behoove us to discuss amongst ourselves what what our procedures are, um, only because um, when we have planning board meetings, we have the applicant go first, and then the planning board discusses the matter. If it is a public hearing, then we do hear from the public, and everyone stands up and says what their opinions are. However, it's not a public hearing this evening. Our meetings are open to the public. We certainly give people the opportunity and the courtesy to um, make statements and and tell us things, but we do not open up our meetings in general to the public. This usually is just discussions between the planning board members. Um, so I just wanna make sure people are not offended by the fact that this is not a free form open uh, to the public. Um, and that's based upon our rules and regulations. We are a volunteer board. We do have rules and regulations that we follow. And um, a big part of that is just making sure we have discussions amongst board members and again, if it is a public hearing, then we do open it up to the public and they stand up and they tell us their um, wishes and, and if they're pro and con on a certain um, application, but that's not the case this evening. So I, I just want to make sure that nobody's offended by the fact that we haven't made this completely uh, open for every member of the public to speak. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank uh, you. Councillor Manning Martin is, is raising her hand again. Let her speak, please. Thank you very much, uh, Diane, for that explanation. Uh, that was very helpful, and I, uh, I've learned a lot in your words, uh, and I appreciate it. So um, in the future, uh, maybe the council, the planning board, rather, can take my concerns into consideration uh, moving forward. Uh, since, unfortunately, we all have been thrown into uh, the world of Zoom and things have changed, uh, that what was okay before, I think, and understood before may not be uh, reasonable now since we all have to Zoom in and, and um, 
watch things on a screen and we can't participate. So oh. I appreciate oh. Diane, your explanation. I did not know that. Uh, but I think that rules can be changed and, and boards can evolve and the public can be more uh, in, included and, and uh, government can always be more inclusive and transparent. So moving forward, I think that maybe that's something we can all work towards together. And I, Diane, I appreciate your remarks. Thank you so much. Chairman, Chairman Ford. Go ahead, Matt. Please. I just wanted to, uh, in response to um, Councillor Charest's comment about the uh, the fire apparatus, um, I did, uh, you know, Ed, I, I do uh, actually uh, thought, had the same thought when we were hearing um, the explanation um, that you had. So uh, that will most definitely be on on my radar when 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 the uh, the formal site plan review comes back. Uh, to you know, to your point, uh, even though there might be access on on an adjacent property at the moment, it doesn't stop them from you know, doing something perfectly within their rights on their property that might prevent that apparatus from, from still getting to, uh, you know, to where it needs to be to, 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 to battle a fire. So uh, 100%, uh, we'll keep that on the radar. Uh, Ed, thank you. Uh, Craig, might you just respond to the, the snow storage and just explain that? Yes, I would be happy to. And uh, I actually felt bad a few of your questions got left a little bit unanswered as we moved on to other things I can certainly address um, briefly. I don't want to hold up the subsequent hearings. I'm sure they're all itching to go. Regarding snow storage, we do show it on our plan on sheet four layout materials. And that's something that has had come up during our uh, construction um, review meetings. And I can't quote me on it, but I think William Pollitz was concerned we might lose some of the guest parking space parking spaces to the uh, southern southwestern corner of the site those nine spaces and um, we had assured him you know we weren't intending on using that for snow storage as it is right now we do meet the required number of parking spaces um, for the zoning and uh, after speaking with our owner the, the site owner um, he will be managing snow removal and he does he is aware that we are not willing to lose these parking spaces in snowstorms so he's willing and able to haul excess snow offsite if needed um, before losing these parking spaces. So that they are committed to leaving those open uh, and accessible year round. If I may, some, some of the issues brought up here will, uh, this evening actually fall on the management of, of this apartment complex or proposed mm -hmm. complex. Occupancy, if they have you know a child and they want to slip them in there, that's up to the terms of the lease provided by the management company. They're going to say it's going to be Mary and John, and that's it. That's all that can be here. And if their uh, if their customers, their tenants are complaining because snow is everywhere, they're just going to have to simply haul it off site. So those those are management issues. Those those aren't really our issues. So yes, that's a good point. We did actually add in our our Rev One set that is coming out. We did add a note to layout materials plan to that effect, stating the snow will be hauled off site before we lose parking spaces. Um, that that is our intent. So we, we are we do understand that is something we we should and will do uh, in order to keep the spaces accessible. And, and to briefly touch upon a couple of Andrew's other questions that we we didn't really get to as we moved on to other other comments. Uh, the path you are correct that was something we talked about during the construction review hearing, and. We went back and forth about a little bit and there are quite a few challenges of, with making it work there. Um, you can't tell on this sheet, but that's a bit of a, a small swale carrying uh, runoff from the lawn areas to yard drains and getting it away from the buildings. So we didn't want to put a walkway through that. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but it wouldn't be great. And then furthermore, when it gets you to the front of the site on drive B, it dumps you out at a sag in the road, which I hate to do as well. Um, have someone come off a walkway into a catch basin. It's not really my my favorite thing. And and then on top of that, coming across the front to Prospect Street, I don't think we'll be able to meet compliance with ADA. Um, it's it's pretty steep there. So we also figured if we were to be able to get a walkway there, it would only serve you know the left half of the back building and the left half of building two perhaps. And it's um you know, everyone else is just the same distance to go to the right and down drive A on the sidewalk. And, and as I mentioned, we did extend the sidewalk along drive A to connect all the way to drive C and, and all the way straight out to prospect. Um, 
And, and we also considered it like when you get across to the mall, for example, you walk a quarter mile or whatever to get to the mall. There's no sidewalks. You walk through a parking lot. So we think we're providing the best access we can here um, safely, especially being a, you know, 36 one bedrooms with um, it's not really a, it's not really a throughway. So we, we think traffic will be a minimum. We, we feel it's um, an adequate uh, way to get people where they need to be safely. Uh, we, we hope the board agrees with that. Uh, and, and to touch on your other comment about sidewalks, um, any proposed sidewalks we show will be compliant with ADA. Um, and we will certainly visit greenery around the dumpsters. And uh, in, in general, uh, in addition to your comments, it sounds like we, as a design team, will go back and uh, have some internal discussions about how we're going to um, handle the potential of people trying to make that extra room a second bedroom. We'll look at that and we can we'll go back to the uh, landscaping a bit. And certainly we'll touch base with the fire department regarding those comments. They seem to have uh, come up a few times. It's certainly something we'll address. And, and I believe, uh, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the buildings are all sprinkled, even the triplexes That's as well, right? Okay. All the buildings are sprinkled. Okay, perfect. That's always With a good. With a full NFPA 13. Great. Thank you. Chairman. Sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Another quick question. Just want to make sure that when we come back, we, we get everything sort of flushed out. Um, the the uh, the visitor parking spots. I, I, I don't know, and, and you know, perhaps Drew could could check with zoning um, for us if if in fact a certain number of visitor spots are required. Um, I guess my question relates to you know the proposed you know division of the two different lots here, and if that is allowed that the visitor spots, if required by zoning, are allowed to reside on a different property. Um, and if so, if there'd be some sort of like land lease or, you know, lease of those spaces, you know, in perpetuity or some sort of easement to, um, to, to allow it to qualify on separate, separate lots. So I'm just, I'm not familiar with that. I was hoping that maybe at some point we could get a, an education on the matter. Uh, maybe attorney Kelty could actually. Yeah, I can address that right now. Uh, the ownership is all common ownership. So, uh, there's not an issue of, uh, trying to obtain an easement. Uh, from a hostile or uh, independent uh, entity. So the easement issue as between our uh, project on our land is, is easily uh, rectified. And uh, yes, uh, as long as uh, property, uh, as long as parking is within 200 feet of its uh, uh, principal uh, generator of the need for parking, uh, you can have parking within 200 feet and we're immediately adjacent to each other. If I may, attorney. And by the way, the, the zoning with respect to parking, the number of spaces, we are in compliance with our R3 zoning. The um, it's, it's unit count, not bedroom count. So the um, parking, the number of spaces we've uh, provided is triggered uh, by the number of units, not bedrooms. I think I would not disagree mm -hmm. that the bedroom issue might go to schools, but it doesn't impact our parking mm -hmm. from a zoning standpoint. Jack, what is the what is the parking per unit requirement in this? In Are this? we two point three? Is it? Craig, so same as downtown. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, sure. One point five. One point five. What is it? I have the calculation here. It is two spaces per dwelling unit plus one guest space per every three units, which in our case gives us a required minimum of 84 spaces. And we actually provide this summary in our, our zoning summary table on a cover sheet, sheet number one. We're is. providing 86 spaces. Um, so but as I mentioned uh, briefly earlier, two of those 86 spaces are reserved for maintenance personnel. So in terms of residential parking, we're providing 84 and the zoning requires 84. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Attorney Kelty. Yes. The, the duplex, is, is that gonna be a rental or is it gonna be sold as is, is two individu individual units? Or? I believe it would be a rental. Okay then it becomes very easily managed uh, uh, by the Lemieux. All, all under the same ownership? 
Am I correct in saying yes, David? Correct, and Roland? Yep, that's correct. It's the, all the property be held together. Okay. Thank you. A anyone else have a question or a comment? Go ahead, Roy, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so just, I just wanted to kind of clarify one of the comments that I made earlier is the exact thing that Drew was talking about with regards to that roadway in front of, in front of building three leading out <clears throat> to, that, to that side road, which if you look on the city's um, GIS map, um, it, it kind of looks like a public street. It is not, Jack said it exactly yeah. correct. It's however, it's private, however, it's private property. It. It's owned by the neighbor to the left, and they allow the people uh, through some sort of a cross easement that what used to be cross keys, now called uh, eaves, I believe, gets to you. So I just wanted to kind of knit those two things together. That my comment is the exact same thing, and I'm in disagreement with trying to use that, but that's just me. Um, and the other thing I want to do is I want to applaud uh, Attorney Cooper for, for, you know, saying things. What she said is 100% correct about that comment that we, we, uh, we don't try to hide anything. Um, and in, in quite the contrary, um, this discussion that we extract from the, the pr the proponent of the project could probably go a long way in um, easing some of the fears of the public and maybe getting the developer to, to answer a question for them already, just, just by our experience and this sort of stuff. So um, that's all I have, thank you. If I may make a quick one, uh, we, we do really air things out pretty good. And it's, I hope this was an education for uh, Councilor Sharast and Martin. We, there's nothing hidden here. It's, uh, we beat it around pretty good. So we do our job. Does anyone else have a comment? Seeing none in the, in the attendance, um, I would say the, the next best steps, uh, Jack, Craig, Bill, and, and Ronald here, is uh, if you put those plans together, I can confer with the board on how many people would like actual physical hard copies. I can get you that number and uh, we can, you know, send me a digital copy, um, which to everybody in attendance, um, email me and I can and forward you as well to the butters or people that are curious. Um, and I'd say we'll put you on the agenda for the next meeting and uh, or whenever the revisions are finalized and get a, a finalized plan in front of the board to make sure that everything's been flushed out and then uh, look to the board to vote. Mr. Chairman, I thought Attorney Kelty had projected two meetings out. Perhaps I misunderstood. No, I, I had suggested that, uh, but I think that uh, um, I don't think that Andrew was necessarily saying the next meeting chronologically, but meaning the next meeting when we're prepared oh, I see. to come back. That a fair statement? Yeah. Say thank you, Andrew. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll wrap this one up. Are we under any time limitations to no. extend this? Okay. All right, then let's uh, move on to new business. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. I just stopped sharing your screen. Perfect. Drew, you all set for uh, 85 Low Street? Uh, yep. Uh, let me unmute uh, Attorney Von Salides. Um, And let me just see. Can hey, you, can, can you hear me? Okay. We can, we can hear you. Uh, in the uh, attendance as well, who else uh, am I looking to unmute from your team here? Well, hopefully I have the applicant, Rob Christie. 
And yeah. I've got our contractor, Ben Perez, and I believe our architect, uh, Mr. Chris Crum. Yes. Go ahead, Ethan. The floor is yours. Um, uh, sorry, just before you, and <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I know that there are um, some attendants <coughs> that would like to speak. So, uh, just want to make that point now that there are All right. uh, citizens. So, what we do, and then we'll entertain them. Mm -hmm. right, uh, just a second, Ann Manning Martin. Are you pressed for time? Uh, no, sir. I'll be happy to hear what he uh, what he has to say. Thank you so much for uh, reaching out to me and ask and, and ask that. I appreciate it. Right. I, I I did watch the ZBA meeting uh, where uh, Attorney Von Zelid is presented on this subject, which is why I'm following it over to the planning board. But um, I appreciate you acknowledging me, and I'll I'll allow him. Uh, to present, and then if I raise my hand, I would appreciate it if you call on me. Thank okay. you. Just so you know, I don't see the screen with the hands raised. I don't see that. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Thank you so much. All right, Ethan, you're up. All right, just for the record, I'm Ethan Vonsalidis, Journey Practicing Law 246, the end of student PVD. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. I will try to be uh, very brief because uh, our project is a, a small project. I think everybody's familiar with the property. It's the American Red Cross building. It's been there since, say, 1968. It is a uh, two-story building. Uh, it contains three floors. It consists of about 11,100 square feet of area. Uh, we're sitting on a lot that contains about 32,500 square feet. And we are in the R4 uh, multiple family zoning district. Uh, what the applicant would like to do is basically do a total renovation of this building uh, by converting it into an apartment complex. Uh, it would contain uh, nine apartments. Uh, there would be four apartments on the lower level. Uh, there'd be four apartments on the first floor, and there'd be one apartment on the second floor. Uh, eight of our apartments would be two bedrooms, and one would be a one bedroom. Uh, each apartment relatively is going to contain an average, I'd say, between uh, 800 to 1,300 uh, square feet of living area. Uh, there are some amenities that they'd like to include in the building. You know, one of them consists of an approximately uh, 400 square foot gym and a workout area. And uh, the other is an approximately 450 uh, square foot business center and a conference room. Uh, there is going to be uh, absolutely uh, no expansion to this building. We're not building it up. We're not building it wider. Uh, we are not creating any additional impervious area. We're going to work with our existing uh, uh, parking area. Now, the exterior of the building is going to be painted. Uh, we'll install all new residential style windows. Uh, we will repave the parking lot and uh, we'll install all landscaping that's in full compliance with our uh, current landscaping requirements. Uh, there are several revisions that were made uh, to the plan that was originally uh, submitted to the planning board. Uh, these changes were the result of our the construction review committee meeting. Uh, you can see that our property uh, currently has the benefit of uh, two curb cut openings, one out to Sawyer Street and one out to Lowell Street. And our original plan showed us closing off uh, the exit out to Sawyer Street and using that area for snow storage. Uh, one of our uh, abutters across the street had a concern with that. And at our construction review committee, we discussed it with uh, everybody in attendance and we've decided to uh, retain that uh, curb cut opening and also retain the uh, Lowell Street curb cut opening. Uh, we were proposing snow storage that was close to uh, Sawyer Street and Lowell Street, which may have created some uh, site distance interference. So we've deleted those areas. And now we're proposing all of our snow storage uh, in the rear yard. Uh, we've also relocated our uh, dumpsters so that now they're in the uh, location that they are currently in. Uh, we've proposed a, uh, a bike rack at the front of the building. Uh, we've put down a transformer pad where the PV municipal light plant uh, requested one. And uh, all in all, I think that's it. And we're certainly here to answer any questions that either the public or any of the board members may have. 
Uh, just a heads up, Ethan, I, I don't know if you can see or not, but I've been sharing my screen and I was uh, showing the new revi the revised plan that we had, you had sent to us that we had made available to the planning board. Uh, Attorney Vonsolides, I have in my hand a memo from Public Services dated February 12th. Have, have you seen this? Uh, yes, I have. And could you respond to his concerns, please? Well, we're going to pay the uh, fee for the uh, I and I. Uh, we are going to utilize the existing foreign sewer service, and uh, we're going to utilize the existing one and a half inch uh, water main. Uh, we we have looked into the catch basin that's to the right side of the building. Uh, it needs to be cleaned out. We'll do that prior to the issuance of a building permit to find out if it's just a leaching catch basin or whether it actually connects into the city uh, uh, system. My gut is telling me that I think it's a, a leaching type of a catch basin, but we won't know until we have the opportunity to get in it and clean it all out. And these will be apartments or condos? These will be apartments. Thank you. Any, uh, any other board members questions? Dr. Otto. I have a, I well, needed to know. I have a question about the curb cut on Lowell Street. Um, I'm sorry, I got to get back to the plan again here. It's okay. Uh, do you want me to share the screen again? I've, I've got it too. Um, I think I misunderstood when Attorney Bunsley said it was an existing curb cut, which it isn't. I, it looks. Um, no, that exists. It's a sidewalk up to Lowell Street is what I'm seeing. I'm looking at the aerial photograph. And there are two entranceways that service this property. One that's on Lowell Street and one that's on Sawyer Street. Huh. Are you looks looking at, Dr. Otto, are you looking at the revised plan that's in there? I'm looking at an aerial photograph of the city of Peabody, which is not showing me a curb cut. I see a sidewalk leading down from Lowell Street into the parking lot. But yeah. at any rate, my question is this. There's a considerable grade difference there, and I'm not seeing a detail to show how that's going to be managed. I would think that we're going to be working with the grade as it is. But uh, Rob, can you respond to that? There, there is a cur current curb cut. We're not going to be doing anything to the grade. It's going to remain as it is. We're only going to be re repaving the existing grade. So the slope. But, will be if I may, is that a sloped sidewalk? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Doctor Rod, are you all set? I have it up on Google Maps. It is. It's a flat sidewalk, and it appears that it is truly existing. Uh, if you're looking at Dr. Otto, if you're looking at on Google Maps, it's under the foliage of that tree. Okay. The sure. okay. And it's served the Red Cross building for over 58 years <laughs> without any issues. All right, I yield to my fellow board members. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's open it up. Uh, I believe there, there's an abutter, Mary Ellen Manning. Uh, I'm gonna unmute her now. Can you up, hear us, uh, Ms. Manning? I think I'm here now. Perfect. Great. I'm Mary Ellen Manning. I'm a direct abutter across the street from the portion of the parking lot that you were just looking at underneath that tree um, with the curb cut, Ms. Otto. So there, the, my memory is that that's a flat sidewalk with a very steep um, pitch beyond it that uh, drops down the hill into the parking lot. And they used to be, um, that used to be where the dumpsters were. So one of the things that attorney Von Zalidis mentioned was that a neighbor, that was me, had mentioned uh, that, um, that what they were going to do before was close off 
the Sawyer Street entrance. And I was not in favor of that. I felt that was going to be forcing too much traffic into um, and out of Lowell Street. I'd prefer that they got rid of that curb cut there and just went in and out of Sawyer Street, and took a left there and went into the parking lot. But Mr. Bonsolides is correct that that curb cut on Lowell Street was there. And he did make a change, which I appreciate very much. So my major concerns that I tried to express at the ZBA, which it was not a, um, an appropriate setting for, as I understand now, that's why I'm here, was the curb cut, closing off the curb cut on Sawyer Street. That seems to have been corrected. I would prefer that that would be the only curb cut and that we would start to try and reduce some of the traffic that's pouring out onto Lowell Street. Um, the second thing that I was concerned about was lighting. So this was has always been uh, the red, well, for as long as I know, has been the Red Cross building, which is a kind of a nine to five business or a seven to four business. Uh, and at night, it is pitch black out there. There's a, there's a big, big um, light that's over by the um, 7-Eleven, and that gives a lot of light. But there are vast areas of pitch darkness back there. And I just think that the board should consider, um, I don't know if it's up to the property owner to be responsible for lighting or if we need to have more um, street lights or lights that go around, wrap around that corner so that the residents will be um, better protected when they get out of their cars. And so when people drive in and out of that parking lot at night, which was not the case prior to this, you know, because this was a daytime business for many, many years. The third thing that I was concerned about was the handicap ramp. One of the things I wanted to know was whether or not this building was going to retain the handicap ramp. And it is a one-story building. It, I think there might be some two stories of living. In. I'm not really sure about that. But it does seem that it would be, con it would be a, an advantage to have a handicap ramp for this building. Um, removing it is what I see is being done in this um, drawing. I may have read it wrong. But it looks to me that the handicap ramp is being removed. I'm not in favor of removing handicap accessibility from a building. And, you know, for all the reasons that we like to promote accessibility. So if, if there's some other, um, if there's something else they're doing in this building that I can't see, because I'm, I can't read drawings. I do the best I can. If, if there's something else that they're doing to promote handicap accessibility, um, I'd like to know what that is. And if they are not, if they're just removing it and not replacing it with something else that's equivalent, then I would be against um, removing that. So those are my three, removing that ramp. Those are my three um, points that I'd like to have the board consider. And I appreciate so much your time. Thank you. Attorney Vonzolides, could you address the lighting and the handicap ramp situation, please? I'll address all three if you'd like. I mean, at our construction review committee, uh, everybody in attendance wanted both of those uh, entranceways to remain open uh, rather than trying to uh, service the property through one. With respect to lighting, we're not proposing any freestanding light poles, but we're obviously going to have security lighting on our building that would be sufficient enough uh, to light the parking area in the evening. But plus, we have the advantage of a lot of ambient light in the surrounding properties. Uh, we have the Crown and Shield Apartments as one of our butters, and we have a strip mall across the street. And we have street lights that are on Lowell Street. And then the third, I may have to leave to my client, but my understanding is I think we are removing that ramp, but we, we're having our uh, handicap unit on the bottom level, so a handicapped person does not have to utilize the stairs or, any, or anything like that. And we have spaced off an area in the parking unit parking lot where you can have no parking so a handicapped person has direct access into their unit. Excuse me. Am I correct on that, Rob? That is correct, Nathan. So basically we're, we're making better access for a handicapped person into our building. 
Mary Ellen Manning. Manning only on the lower floor. I don't see why you'd take away access for a handicapped visitor to, to visit somebody who lives on the upper floor. That just seems crazy to me. I agree with that. That's exactly my thought. Rob? What about the visitors who might be handicapped to the other floors? I mean, they won't be able to get in. Okay, so that that ramp is being removed because there's there's not going to be a door there. That that the the side of that building, the west side of the building, um, that's going to be a, a, it's basically there's, there's two units over there, um, and it's just going to be windows on that side. The 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 entrance would be on in the in the front of the building, um, but but that's we're not planning on putting a door on that side as well. We're limiting the the access points for the building. I understand that, but I, why wouldn't, you, well, my, my point being that maybe the handicap ramp should be put where it's appropriate to put it. But if, if there's no door there, of course you can't, it would be a, a ramp that goes nowhere, but because of the pitch of the, of the property, I don't, I think there are going to be a significant number of stairs for people to get up to second floor just it just seems like you're removing some utility but i um I, i'm sure that you all can um you're professionals so i'll i'll defer to your uh, judgment on this but th those were my remarks and I, I thank you again thank you councillor martin uh, are you aware of uh, any code or law that requires a private property to have handicapped accessibility can you hear me I hear you, yes. Uh, I would defer to the building commissioner on that. All right, thank you. Uh, do you have any comments uh, or questions at this time? I, I do, thank you so much. First of all, first of all, I wanna thank um, attorney Von Zeliz for listening to the concerns that were raised at the ZBA meeting. Uh, I know that he's worked uh, to incorporate those in his updated uh, plan that he put forward. And I appreciate that. It's always good to listen to folks that have to deal with a project that comes in their neighborhood. So uh, thank you, Ethan, for that. And uh, I also think this is a great project that we're using, a, a, we refurbishing a building that already exists. There's no additional impervious area. I think that is great. That's what we want to do. We want to provide more housing, uh, affordable housing without uh, further construction on land that had no construction. I think that is great. Uh, the, the my major concern is the intersection of Endicott King and Lowell Street, which is right, as we all know, uh, right a stone's throw from this property. Uh, that is the most dangerous intersection in the city of Peabody with the most car crashes. Uh, and we have uh, a 240B projects proposed in those areas, uh, one on King Street and one on Endicott Street. Uh, that I think amount to about 200 units combined if, if those uh, units, if those projects are approved. So that was my concern is the traffic flow from this project uh, when it was originally proposed to only have one access onto Lowell Street. I didn't think it was wise. I thought it would uh, be problematic with the traffic flow and uh, cause safety concerns, again, given the uh, intersection of Endicott King and Lowell and the anticipated uh, 40B projects with a lot, you know, bringing a lot more cars and, and residents to those areas if they are approved. So those are my concerns, but uh, Mr. Von Zulides did uh, allow or change the, the project to not have access and egress only onto Lowell Street, which was my major concern, again, given the intersection of Endicott King and Lowell to keep uh, Lowell Street safe, uh, the community safe with, uh, as you, you all know, the, the area of Lowell Street and the, the traffic um, situations that we have there. So those are my concerns. And I think that's all I have to add. And I hope that you all can discuss those things and um, come up with a great project to uh, allow this to continue. Because I do think it's a great project, um, just to make it safe for, for the, the area. Thank you. Thank you. 
Matt, go ahead, Matt. Thank you, John. Um, uh, I, I suppose to, to Councillor uh, Manning's uh, point, I guess, Ethan, I just had a question regarding any, any traffic studies uh, upcoming or already completed. Um, does that extend down the five or so intersections all the way to King Street, or would a traffic study extend that far? So I think it's three or four lefts and rights down the road. I didn't know what the radius might be for. Well, I know there's been traffic studies done on the King Street property. Uh, uh, specific to this property. Is there not any? Not any... specific with this property only because nine units is going to generate a <laughs> nominal amount of traffic for a road okay. that sees 34,000 cars a day. Understood. So we won't see a, so we won't, we won't have the chance to review any sort of impact to any of the adjacent intersections. No. Your presentation. Uh, I can just clarify, Matt, in the application, they've requested a waiver for the traffic study. Okay. Stating and exactly what nuts and bolts wise, Drew should should said waiver is said waiver reasonable. Again, to Ethan's point, it's only nine units. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a traffic engineer. Um, and I would, you know, defer to the, the planning board. I think that's why the waiver system set up is that they can ask for the waiver and you can make that exact point. Um, I think Ethan is right. It, you know, it is nine cars. It's residential. So people will probably be coming out at the, the peak hours and going back in, you know, leaving in the morning, coming back in the afternoon or in the evening. Um, so uh, as far as traffic from those nine units, I do think it will be, you know, minimal. But again, I think that's up to the board, you know, if they want to grant that waiver or not. True. Would you want to uh, unblock Ed Charest, please? Yeah, I think I think he's gone. I think he might have. No, forgotten. I'm I'm here. Sorry, Councillor. Do you have any comments, Ed, or uh, questions? Yes, I, I just do. Uh, and again, I, I'm sorry. I I apologize. Uh, respectfully, I did not acknowledge the chairman, Mr. Ford, in my previous comments, and I I like to acknowledge the analysis so through you. Thank you very much. I am not the ward councillor of this particular location, but I am the ward councillor across the street and then further on down the street. <clears throat> so uh, again, so I thank you. Appreciate allowing me to speak, even though this is not a, a, a public hearing. Um, my only concern, and, and I thought I know Dr. Otto and uh, Mr. Feld will probably be aware of this because of locations of where they live. The um, coming out of, I believe, Sawyer Low Road by Bung Ho, um, coming onto Low Street, taking a right or even taking a left. Sometimes that's become dangerous because if a car is parked on Lowell Street in front of the, um, the that plaza, it's hard to to come up uh, that hill uh, onto Lowell Street to either take a right or left. In the pitch of the driveway that is proposed, um, again, I, I, I did not know there was a curb cut on Lowell Street to um, the Red Cross building. I, I've walked that area and drive by it every single day and still not aware of this. But if that is the case, um, again, that will, uh, to me, just a concern and I'll leave it up to this board to make the right decision that if, if that is wise to come out with that road on Sawyer, uh, coming out so close in the traffic coming down Low Street, um, if it is, is safe, not only for uh, people walking, driving and coming down Franklin, and certainly not make a cut through, an unintentional cut through, through that property um, from Franklin across Low Street into that property down and outside of, uh, out on Sawyer or vice versa coming out of uh, Sawyer to through the park a lot to get onto Low Street. So you're not, you bypassing that uh, intersection of by Bungho and Low Street. So um, my, my only comments was, again, I respectfully wanted to acknowledge Mr. Ford uh, previously allowing me to speak and then tonight and again this is not my ward but it is uh, adjacent to my ward and I do certainly appreciate um, the time so thank you very much and have a good evening. You, you're welcome Ed. Ed. Just a point of information I believe cutting through someone's parking lot or a gas station to avoid an intersection is illegal so if, if you see this going on then we might have to yeah, I, I, Mr. Chairman Ford, not to interrupt, I see it quite often. I see it at the uh, gas station of um, Endicott in Lowell Street right. uh, constantly. Um, unfortunately, we do not have enough uh, enforcement on the streets out there to to do that. Um, and again, it's just, um, I, again, unintentional, I'm sure. And and again, it's, it's not to take away from what the project is 
I, I just wanted to point it out. I'd be amiss if I, I saw something then worry some that it bring to your attention. Again, as uh, Dr. Otto said, I, I still cannot picture the curb cut on Lowell Street at the Red Cross building. I, I just, I don't, I got to walk down there later on and look at it myself. So I thank you. But if memory serves me right, I think it's kind of a sloping sidewalk to the street. It's, it's quite, quite the sloping. <laughs> quite the sloping. There, there is uh, there is a retain wall in between the property on the back side of the property to the abutting property along that whole back uh, uh, property line. Uh, and that's uh, what you're uh, referring to that that, that that transition from the uh, the back of the property along the sidewalk and the in the Lowell Street end uh, the uh, the side entrance on Sawyer Street. Uh, if I may, through the chair. Uh, no, I'm I'm talking directly on Lowell Street. I, I think I'm there's sorry. a I, I think there's a stairway that goes from the sidewalk down to the park a lot. There is. Uh, okay, but okay. if I share my screen really quickly, just to make sure I see you could see this is Google Images from Oh, you're right. No nope. November 19, 2019. Yep. I, I, I am corrected. I am I am picturing more where the uh, the gentleman is walking in the sign. So it makes me even more concerned with it being so close to so sorry. But again, um, I have total faith in this board to make the right decisions and I'm not questioning. I'm just giving you my concerns. So I do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gagnon, you have a comment? Yes, I, I would be in favor of both curb cuts because um, on Soya, you have a clear curb cut coming out of the bunghole too. So. If you have everybody using Sawyer and, you know, people are coming off a of lull onto Sawyer, people are coming out from the old Red Cross curb, curb cut and bungle, like a little traffic jam there. But, you know, so I think it's good to have both curb cuts that if someone is coming down Lowell Street, especially uh, from the east, that can just take a right turn into uh, this development from Lowell Street, I think would be beneficial. So I would be in favor of having both. Otherwise, there could be a little log jam there sometimes because that bunghole, that parking lot always seems to be jammed down there, you know, with the liquor store and the variety store. And I think there's a couple other things there. So that's my comment. I would have to agree with you on that, Joseph. And this is the way the property has been serviced now for 52 years. And when the Red Cross was in its heyday, it had a lot more traffic than what nine residential units are going to generate. And, you know, it survived without having any major problems. Roy, I would agree with both of your comments that um, that the, the the two curb cuts are prudent, and that they maybe be lined appropriately to maybe discourage the one on Sawyer with maybe a do not enter sign so that you don't enter because it's very very that one's very steep and very narrow so that one's a lot steeper than the one on Lowell. The one on Lowell has a, a sidewalk, I assure you. Mr. Ford is flat, but it does it does slope down after the, the edge of the sidewalk. But the, the one on Sawyer is a lot steeper and it's a lot narrower. Um, I would just like to ask, I, I believe eight units triggers inclusionary zoning. So there's probably one affordable component to this one unit. That is correct. Okay, thank you. And I would actually encourage you to consider a light pole. Um, there's a little grass plot if you're if you're uh, entering from the Lowell Street to your property. There's a little grass plot on the left that doesn't have any trees near it and um, is kind of centered on your parking lot. And if if appropriately cut off uh, from, you know, uh, light pollution type splash. Is it like a zero cutoff LED fixture? Would do very well in lighting that and it wouldn't affect the neighbors on the other side of Lowell Street. And seeing as that seven story building tannery too is so far away, um, a, a properly apportioned fixture would, would do very well there. So I, I disagree that you can light that whole parking lot properly from your building. And I would encourage you to consider putting a single pole right there. So that's my only two comments. Thank you. Anything further, anyone else? 
Dr. Otto. I apologize for beating a dead horse, but I, I just wanted to uh, make one final point about universal accessibility of the, of the structure. From the plan that we have, we don't know how the entrances to the building will be modified. So this, uh, an earlier mistake of ours about the ramp now no longer leading anywhere. Um, sure, it doesn't, and there's no need to have a ramp if it, there's no doorway at the end of it. Um, nevertheless, any one of us could be permanently or temporarily made immobile at any moment in an instant. And it seems to me we owe something to all of our community to make buildings when they're under renovation as handicapped accessible as they can be. Um, and so I, I support the project too, but I really feel there is an opportunity to make the entire building um, accessible, uh, universally accessible at its entrance points. That's all, thank you. Anything further? Do I have a motion? Uh, just before a motion is made, uh, everybody has read the, the public service memo that was provided in the packets as well. All right, I asked, uh, I asked Ethan to address that earlier, which I believe he did. Mm -hmm. I think most comments have been um, most comments have been answered by uh, Ethan, but there are some still things that need to be shored up, but it sounds like they are doing that. So I don't know if that just wants to be a condition in there as well, just to you know satisfy the Department of Public Service memo. Just a heads up now, I'm not making this motion. Somebody's gonna make the motion. If you wanna put conditions on it, then that's your motion. So feel free. Do I have a motion? I'll make one. <laughs> Stand back, brother. <laughs> Joseph, you're good at this. I'm just looking to find the DPS memo so we can reference the individual items. I've got about 20 windows open on the screen. I know. That's why I prefer paper. I got it in my hand. I'm looking for it too, but I'm hoping Judy beats me to the punch. Yep, I got it. I got There's it. not a lot on it, actually. It's just a few items. Okay. I, I made, it, but I'm not good at motion. <laughs> I want Judy to do it. <laughs> if I made board members, I'm just going to recap the what. Uh, well, you know, we could do. We could just say all conditions uh, outlined in the DPS memo of February 12th unless there is any point of contention with the applicant. Was that, was that, that was not your motion, was it? That was not my motion. Okay. <laughs> Thinking on my feet and failing. Okay. Roy, do you want to include in there about a light? Would you, would you indulge my, my uh, desire to, to have them put a, a, uh, a, a light pole in, in that island? It's, it's your motion, Roy. I, I don't think I can make a motion from the chair, so. Judy's making it. Uh, Very well. Mr. Chairman, move to recommend to the building inspector that a permit issue for 85-87 Lowell Street for the construction of uh, nine apartments, incorporating the conditions laid out in a memo from the Department of Public Services dated 12 February, 2021, with the additional condi uh, condition that the applicant include a light in the um, grass plot in front to provide more lighting for the property and its future residents. Second. 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 A second. You want a roll call or show of hands? Roll call. Um, let me pull up. I need to get the seating. Um, well, I think I have the, the previous seating available. Um, um,
Sorry about this. Just getting the seating out. For the sake of time. Mr. Chairman, while he's doing that, if I can just say thank you very much, uh, Councilors Winning Martin and um, Councilor Charest, I think maybe gone now. And um, Alta, uh, Ms. Manning, I think the comments were very helpful. Informational. Dr. Otto. Yes. Mr. Feld. Yes. Mr. Yagman. Yes. Attorney Cooper. Yes. Mr. Samoz. Yes. Mr. Ford. Yes. Mr. Zanzali. Yes. Passes. Good luck, Ethan. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, guys. Uh, just, uh, uh, Councillor Manning Martin, you still have your your hand raised. Are you still wishing to speak? No, thank you. My my bad. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item up is Subdivision Board Action Stonegate. Attorney Kelty, you're still here. He does not look like he's still here now. I understand we have a correspondence regarding uh, Stonegate. It's what somebody moved to receive. There should be a letter in your packets um, regarding the extension of time. Mr. Chairman, what's the date on the letter? Unfortunately, I'm having an issue. I can't pull it up. Uh, I don't know. I couldn't pull it up either. I can't pull it up either. I can't see the letter. Is it not coming up for OneDrive is giving me difficulty today. My apologies. I'm pulling it up now, but. And I can share my screen too, so. Please. But, um, there you go, Diane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move to receive a letter um, from Attorney Kelty regarding Stonegate definitive, definitive subdivision plan dated February 11th, 2021, um, requesting an extension of time. Um, he asked from March 25th, what are our meetings um, around that time look like? Um, and let me pull Four and 18. Okay. That's what it is. Um, I'm sorry? That's what it is this month, 4 and 18. Oh, really? 30 days of September. Um, since he's looking for March 25th, should we go out beyond March 25th? What are you looking at in April? It'd be the second. Nope, sorry, right. the first. Well, if he's, if he's requesting the 25th, I think they're doing some revisions to their plan. Uh, in fact, it says that in the, in the letter. Uh, we could go with that. You go with the April, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Go with the March uh, 25th. Okay. So Mr. Chairman, again, move to receive the letter um, dated February 11th, 2021, and also to extend the time to March 25th, uh, 2021. We have a second. Second. Dr. Rado. all in favor? Aye. You raising your hand, Diane? Aye, yeah. Perfect. Okay, unanimous. Uh, no, no correspondence. Can I ask a question about that? Have we not seen correspondence from the city council on special permits and the like because there haven't been any or because they're not getting into our packets? Uh, I've been coming in every now. I, so I come into city hall on different times, but uh, I can, I know that we are been getting some um, 
I can upload them though. I will put them all in there. There hasn't so been keep... that many special permits filed though. That okay. means that I will put the latest ones in there. That's how I keep up with what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. Other matters properly before the board. Chairman. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry to have so many questions tonight. Uh, I was hoping to make a motion tonight if I could. Um, I guess I'll just propose it and see what you all think. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to request that the board writes a letter to the city council to uh, appropriate funds and works with the city purchasing department and soliciting requests for proposals for the upgrade of the city's master plan. My understanding is that we haven't had a master plan almost 20 years. Uh, and I believe it's usually 10 and there's some state money involved in that. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I mean. I, I believe we'd have to work with the, the uh, again, the purchasing department and, and, and see what 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 funds might be available to, um, you know, via grants or, or whatever, uh, whatnot to uh, to make that a reality. But I think it's uh, important. Um, like you said, I, I think there is a recommendation that it only be, um, you know, 10 years old. Uh, ours is almost 19. Um, and I believe that that having a master plan uh, updated and in hand can can open and make available other opportunities for for grant um, money agreed, agreed. to the to the city so if we have one and we make requests for for additional monies I believe we can be granted more grants than we are now so I'd like to make that make that motion if I could I second. you do yes Dr. Rado second everybody in favor oh, Diane Cooper seconded oh I'm sorry Diane Cooper seconded okay. I so we have a uh, unanimous. I wasn't looking yes. at the screen. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any, Joe, go ahead. Any further uh, information on uh, new members? I mean, we're getting close every time where Drew's panicking and make, you know, to make sure that we have a, a quorum. Um, you know, it would be nice to have the engineers or, or, or or someone, someone else that's willing to volunteer their time and be a board, new board member. And uh, Drew, uh, I've not, I've yet to hear an update um, on that. I have not, but I can uh, inquire with the mayor's office um, about that. Yeah, that Judy, Judy had an excellent idea there a few weeks ago with uh, a little advertisement. Are the other boards short? Of members or is it just us there's other board yeah and I'm, I'm current mentioned at the last meeting but there's a few different boards in the city that are also looking for members as well i believe this uh conservation commission is i mean i in other towns i've noticed that uh on their websites they are advertising like in uh salisbury for example uh you know board member or a hamilton where they say, uh, you know, vacancies board, you know, one planning board, one board of appeals. And uh, I mean, I don't think anybody in the community knows that we, we need a couple of members on this board, really just us talking and sending letters to city hall. Yeah, we can certainly use engineers, civil engineers. So any of you folks watching out there and you have an interest in the community Contact the mayor's office. Um, so, sorry, to Judy's points, are the emails for the city council things get sent to a, a folder that doesn't send me notifications, but uh, we did receive some this week. Um, and I can tell you there's a um, proposed nail salon for, um, or sorry, there is a uh, auto body repair, auto body shop repair and paint shop business for um, to First Street. And then there was a special permit filed for um, allow an existing previously approved drive-through window for a non-bank tenant at 19 slash 23 Central Street. And then there was a special permit request filed for a auto body and repair shop at 80 Newberry Street. Judy, I can forward you those applications if you'd like. Thanks. Thanks for bringing them up. I think we should all be getting the same thing, myself. Yes. I can forward them to the board. Very good. Anybody have anything else? 
I'll entertain a motion. Move to adjourn, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Looks unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, folks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.